I'm your host, David Starkey, and my guest this time is Casey Caldwell, the Managing Director of the Community Arts Workshop, or as it's better known, CA. Um, wow, it's great to have you on, Casey. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Good to be um, here. The, uh, CA is a big part of our art scene, of our creative community here in the Santa Barbara area, so I'm really excited to, to hear all the things that you've done and that you're going to do. Um, but I want to start off by just asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself, if people don't don't know who Casey is. Sure, yeah. Um, so I uh, moved here to go to Westmont. I was a theater major at Westmont College. Okay. Uh, and I had been uh, running a little theater company in town for a number of years and working at the Which UCSB. Was... We would call Ratatat Theater Group. Oh, sure, yeah. You remember? Yeah, hey, yeah. You're probably the only one. <laughs> um, and uh, I was working a day job at the UCSB library, and yeah. uh, one of the board members started talking to me about the call and asking me to get involved. And long story short, here I am. Well, that's great. Yeah. So you kind of came of age in the Santa Barbara arts scene. I did, yeah. I mean, I did not. I did not go to Westmont planning to be a theater major. So I kind of fell in love with theater there and Met John into the probably, arts. And yeah, John and John Blundell and Mitchell Thomas. Right. Um, and that sort of that theater program and the uniqueness of it really kind of captured me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I've been I've been doing art ever since. Is there anything that you bring from that experience to your directorship of, of college? Yeah, I mean, so I wasn't sure when I first got involved whether I sort of, it wasn't clear whether it would be a full-time job, a part-time yeah. job. I thought, oh, maybe I'll start, I'll keep doing theater. Um, and uh, it quickly became clear that you know, this would be a full-time job. Um, and I was surprised, I think I was surprised at how natural it was to make the transition and how similar the two fields felt. Because mm. theater is all about collaboration, it's all about, particularly the kind of theater I was doing, sort of bootstraps, like whatever it takes, figure it out. Sure. Um, sort of adaptive, working with a variety of disciplines and genres. And I still do all of those things. And, and working with uh, you know, committees and volunteers, I still do a lot of writing, I still do a lot of talking in front of people, I still do a lot of kind of creative thinking on my feet. Um, and I think one of the things that I loved the very most about doing theater was directing actors and all of the people I was working with, trying to find out, you know, what are they best at and how can I help bring out the best in them? Mm -hmm. And that really is the job now. You know, how can the call be of use to people? How can it create the conditions in which people can do their best work, that they can feel free to experiment and like, I could do something. Mm -hmm. I could, yeah. I could do something. That's what all creative people want to do yeah. is to have that freedom mm -hmm. to say I can do something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's 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 go back a little bit for people who aren't uh, familiar with Ka. It, it got its idea has been around for a long time, right? Yeah. There was an arts master plan. I'm told in 1985. And how old were you then? I was born in 1986. All right, so you were <laughs> minus one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, yeah. There was an arts master plan in 1985. Um, I believe uh, shepherded along by Patrick Davis. Okay. Um, and uh, it was looking at the art scene in Santa Barbara and what would it take to sort of sustain and grow it long term. And it called for a, a wide variety of things, all of which happened: uh, the renovation of the Granada Theater, uh, Santa Barbara having a mid-sized theater, which became the New Vic. Um, what became Center Stage, what became CAF and then MCA, a, a variety of things. And one of the things identified in that plan was that even in 1985, it was getting harder and harder for ours to find affordable space. And wouldn't it be great if there was some kind of a flexible, affordable space that all different kinds of groups could use for all different kinds of things? And maybe we call it a community arts workshop right. or something. Right. Um, and everyone, as I'm told, said, oh, that's a great idea, but there was no definite place and there was no key stakeholder, and it just kind of floated out there for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I remember, uh, it's, I sort of got a sense of the history of it when I was flipping through a book uh, Aaron Graffy wrote about the history of Santa Barbara, and it was like, you know you're a real Santa Barbara and when, 
And one of the things was, you know a real Santa Barbara when Patrick Davis has tried to talk to you about the community arts <laughs> workshop. And I realized like, oh, this is really, people have been working on this for a long time. Um, so I, I had a sense pretty quickly that I'd sort of stepped into something when right. I got involved. Right. And so uh, when did, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember when the, the space started to get erected and when it was- So the city about. had this property for a long time at the corner of Garden and Ortega right. um, that was built originally as the city's motor pool and then it was the city's first recycling center, okay. but it had soil contamination under the ground. And so the city you know, didn't really know exactly what to do with it. It was gonna be quite expensive to fix. Uh, solstice, um, which is, you know, Santa Barbara's Mardi Gras, like this rich tradition, had always uh, never had a definitive home to build the parade. Um, they always, every year, would find another space. Right. Um, and one of the spaces that the city had allowed them to use was this property on the corner of Garden and Ortega. But it was sort of a provisional solution. It wasn't really safe. Um, and so the city was interested in two things, finding a reliable home for the Solstice Parade because it's such an impactful Santa Barbara tradition and perhaps fulfilling this idea of a community arts workshop. Um, and so into that gap stepped this small up and coming nonprofit, the Santa Barbara Arts Collaborative, which got founded in 2008, um, who said, we actually, we think we can do this. We can finally step in and figure out how to make this happen. Um, and so the city gave the Arts Collaborative a provisional five year lease, which certain conditions of renovations of the site um, the Arts Collaborative started raising funds, fulfilled those conditions. We got a 25 year lease, uh, I think three years ago. Oh, great. Um, the idea was that the city would give the Arts Collaborative a lease for a dollar a year, for essentially free, uh, and that it would provide space for the Solstice Parade to be built in the summer, and the rest of the year it would be this flexible, affordable space for the rest of the community to maximize the use of, um, with the condition that the Arts Collaborative would raise the money to do the renovations necessary. And so we're almost there. Um, we, it was a $2,000 cap, $2 million capital campaign, uh, and we've got about 100,000 left to go. Um, mm -hmm. And we're very optimistic we're gonna wrap it up by the end of the year. That's great. Um, so and, and, but there's not much left of the year, so that's- Not <laughs> very much. Optimistic. Yeah, no, we've, we've got, some, we got some good prospects. We're, we're sort of ticking away at it. Uh, if anybody would like to support, um, spcaw.org slash donate. Um, Say that one more time. SBCaw.org slash donate. Okay. And people can help us get over the finish you know, line. Hopefully somebody's watching yeah. out there. They'll put you over the finish yeah. line. Well, we've got, uh, we've been talking for the last uh, eight or nine minutes, but um, we have a, a slew of pictures mm. that you brought in. So let's yeah. jump in. And this is sort of the construction in the early days. Um, uh, what are we looking at here? Yeah, so I sent some photos of how far the space has come. So this is representative, there was soil contamination under the ground. That's what had held back development of the site right. for many years. And so this is us fixing that. Um, so there's, a, there's a, a membrane that goes down over the soil and then new concrete on top of that. Um, and so that alone was a, was a huge step in allowing the space to be and usable. That again. keeps the, the bad stuff at bay. Yeah, it's my understanding, and I'm not an expert, is the issue is the vapors rising up in the building and being trapped there, mm -hmm. um, and it's not much. So the vapors rise up, hit the membrane, and then there's a little vent that shoots it out to the above the ceiling, and that allows it to safely dissipate into okay. the atmosphere. So, okay. yeah. Some of the early um, things that you had happen, I think we have. We have yeah, so this is uh, Whit Moon Theater Company's Hard Rain, um, and it sort of shows the space in, in its rawness. Um, mm -hmm. As we go through more photos, you can see uh, how, how the space has changed. And this is also a shot from them as a musical performance from that show. Um, yeah, one of the very first uses of the site. Um, this was an early master class in the South Building before we redid the floors. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is us erecting the uh, Caw Gates, um, which are these incredible pieces of public art. They designed, really are, yeah. Designed by David Shelton. I can't believe, honestly, we got away with it because um, it's huge and kind of funky, and uh -huh. you know, and uh, so it's it's really exciting to have it there. and really sets the tone for the space. That's so cool. Um, this is uh, one of the uses that comes back year after year. This is the Vada end of year student show um, from Santa Barbara High, mm -hmm. and again, that's the space is. Uh, developed since then, um, but just a, a lovely thing that comes back year after year. Um, this was an early um, sort of workshop artist in residence, this artist named Barbara Parmet, who um, needed to construct a giant wing um, and told us there's really no place else in town that she could build something <laughs> like that. It's the only place for a giant wing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let, let me pause here because yeah. um, if I'm an artist like Barbara and I want to build a giant wing, 
how much is it going to cost me to rent a space like this? Yeah, know? so um, especially a project like that is a conversation. If it's an event or a short-term thing, then I have sort of a, a template of like, okay, if it's a class, it's this much. If it's an event, it's this much. Um, but we also try to accommodate, oh, again, a project like that that can't happen anyplace else, and she needed a month. Um, and so we sort of worked out, okay, what can you afford? What can we afford to sponsor? Um, so yeah, you email me. Um, there's a use questionnaire you fill out, and then sort of based on the amount of time, the scale, the complexity of the event, I produce a quote for you. Okay. Um, but the idea of this space is that it's as affordable as we can possibly make it. Absolutely. Well, I, when I, I'm on your mailing list, and I, oftentimes I'll see um, uh, workshops with, with artists. Yeah. Uh, is that something that they propose to you, and how, yeah. how does that work? Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that I want to sort of convey to people as much as possible with the space, is the space, our role, at least with the car, is just we're here to empower you. And so the vast majority of the things that happen to the car are organized by nonprofits, local artists, teachers. So they come to us, they say, I want to teach a class. I say, great, you know, we'll fit you in on the calendar. Here's a room, here's a rate. We'll put you on our mailing list. Um, and then we do what we can to provide services. So the mailing list is a service. Uh, we have a box office service for events. We'll do. We'll have a gallery sales service for a gallery show. But mostly, it's you know we try to get out of your way. What, whatever you want to do within reason, we try to empower you to do. So I'm a painter and I want to do a six week workshop. Yeah. Um, do I have to pay the six weeks up front? And what if I don't get any students? Am I out of that? Yeah. Money? Yeah. Uh, with a with a six week workshop, you you do pay up front. Um, but it's generally cheap enough that you're not sort of out of the, you know, you're not too wrecked if it, if it doesn't if fill. It doesn't fill yeah. And we don't, I mean, anything that comes in from it is yours. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's your class. You, you take the fees. It's, it's to your benefit. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's, because I, I had always wondered about that. And I think a lot of artists in town, too, yeah. do think, you know, what, how does that work? Yeah. Um, let's go back and take, keep uh, taking a look at, at the images. Uh, what, this what is from there? Solstice, yeah. uh, maybe two or three years back in the summer. Um, this was a hip hop dance workshop from Everybody Dance Now, uh, maybe three or four years ago. This was a musical performance. Uh, I think this is the Brian Titus Trio. And uh, it, also, there are companies that can rent out the space too, right? Is that, am, am I correct? Yeah, that? absolutely. Yeah, right. yeah no, um, organizations use the space all the time. I mean, Solstice is, is a good example. Right. Bot is another example, yeah. Uh, this was a puppet making workshop um, organized by uh, the uh, Puppet Fest, Santa Barbara. It only happened the one year, unfortunately. But. Well, let's pause there on that. So yeah. like, what, what happens in a, in a puppet making workshop? Did, were, were you around when this was? Yeah, on? that was, um, I think it was. I think it was relatively standard class. I think. I think people signed up for maybe three weeks of classes. Okay. They paid a fee to the teacher. It was once a night for for several for a few weeks. Yeah, uh -huh. if I remember correctly, it was right. four or five years ago. But, yeah. yeah. So so people walk in and they come out with a puppet. <laughs> yeah, that was. I mean, it was a master class. It was part of this. It was part of this festival. Um, and so that one in particular, I think they learned sort of specific techniques related to making a particular kind of puppet. And I think they made three or four as a group. Okay. What, what's the difference between um, what happens at CA and what happens um, at, at City College over like at the Wake Center or something like mm. that? How, 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 how is that different? How, how is that similar? Yeah, I mean, I think the CA, the, the difference of the CA is really the variety of use. Okay. Because it's, with our, our role is essentially we just give you the room as cheap as we can. We don't have a lot of equipment. We've got folding tables, we've got folding chairs, we have the lighting that comes with the space. Um, and so in many cases, we're able to just kind of, the artist buys insurance to cover the run of the project. And in most cases, we just give them a key and let them, and let them run the wow. show. Okay. Um, so that really, the, the variety of use that the space can accommodate the only limit really is the, the sort of dimensions of the walls and the artist's imagination and the ability to figure out how to make that happen. So that kind of workshop ethic um, is the uniqueness of the space. So it's not, you know, it's not just a school. It's not just a theater venue. It's not just a gallery. It's not just a workshop. It's not just a festival. It's all of those things and more. And, and are artists typically um, having a successful time financially in terms of, you know, uh, I mean, 
because you, you you always wonder. Well, I wondered did yeah. that fill up or what happened? Yeah, no, I think I think so. Um, you know, I, I certainly I certainly care a lot about it. I mean, it's the arts. Like, I think a lot of artists feel great if they just broke even right. and didn't lose a bunch of money, and so that that <laughs> happens a fair amount. Right. Um, but it's not it's not. Uh, unordinary for an artist to do a show and and you know do much better than break even and right. feel really good about right, it. So, right. Yeah. Let's go back and uh, keep looking at, at the images that you brought in here. What we this here? was the end of a printmaking project with a group called Print Power. Um, they did a series of printmaking workshops with survivors of uh, sexual assault. Oh wow! Um, so these they made flags uh, in a screen printing class. It's a really cool exhibition. So some really powerful and important work being yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is Pianos on State. Um, this is one of the programs at the Caw that we actually run and organize. Um, and so the pianos are, are painted at the Caw every year. This is another Pianos on State image. And then they go out to State Street for three weeks for anybody to play. Um, that's a program from the very earliest days of the Arts Collaborative before we were even involved at the Caw. Um, and so the pianos for many years were painted elsewhere. They, we didn't have the Caw to use them. So it feels really great oh, to bring perfect. that yeah, in house. That seems like a great fit, yeah. And it's another place now where it sort of feels like I can't imagine where else we would paint these mm -hmm. if right, other right. than this space. Right. Uh, this construction photo, this is us redoing the concrete out, outdoors of the car, and you can see them also kind of taking the doors off the various buildings. Uh, a lot of the buildings, particularly the north building, had no doors and windows, um, so we had to raise money to install those and make the space that could much be a more. Problem. <laughs> it was. I mean, it was fine in the summer. You know, right. during solstice, the weather was perfect. Right, right, right. Um, but the rest of the year, when it got cold or it got rainy or it got uh, windy. Um, Vada, the pictures we showed earlier, they used that north building for two or three years with no doors and windows. Oh, and every year they hang all the gamble, art. Yeah. yeah, every year they hang all the art, and sure enough, some of the art would blow right off the walls. <laughs> um, and they just they kept coming back because yeah. they they loved the space, and I don't yeah. think there were a whole lot of other spaces yeah. they could do it. Yeah. But we were we were very glad to raise the money and put the doors on. So that well, and the fact that it's so centrally anymore. located, I think, yeah. is a great. Advantage. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's it it fulfills a unique niche because it's downtown enough that it's a central arts and events location, but off the beaten track enough and in a, in a commercial manufacturing district where you feel like you can make a mess, you can, you can do some workshops, you can build some things. Um, so it hits a, it's kind of a sweet spot. Um, there are a number of other uh, beautiful arts venues in town for sort of more polished, uh, you know, uh, more exclusive kinds of work. The car is unique. I mean, you, you walk right in off the street, there are no carpets, right. you know. You know, you just you sort of have a sense of like I could go in here and do something. Right. Um, so the architecture of the space is really does a lot uh, for the mission yeah. of it as well. well what about the, you talking about making messes? I mean, mm -hmm. are there any famous messes that you've had to clean up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a theater production in the summer. They um, they uh, their um, aesthetic for the show involved a giant pile of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and that was, that took them a lot longer for them to clean out right. than they expected. Yeah. I mean, Solstice, of course, is just, you know, this incredible project with just an amazing density of paint and glitter yeah, yeah. and so much. Um, and so they, they put a lot of work into cleaning up the space right. um, and do an incredible job, right. honestly. Right. Um, but, yeah. but, but for you, it's okay. I mean, while they're working, it's, it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter how, how crazy. Yeah, I mean, the principle of the space is you can do whatever you want as long as you can take it back to the way it looked before. Uh -huh. So you can repaint the walls, you can nail stuff into the walls, you can hang stuff on the ceiling, as long as you can reasonably restore it, patch, repaint, do whatever needs to be done to and take it back. Has everyone done that so far? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone who uses the car really has a sense that it's a community resource and right. they, and they want to protect it. Um, so, I mean, there's the occasional mistake. People sometimes think that they can clean something up that they can't, and so we have to deal with that. Right. But the vast majority of the cases, it's really amazing yeah. how, how good care people take of it. Well, that's good, and that speaks well to our yeah. creative community overall, that people have that, that sense of responsibility. Absolutely. And, uh, kind of, um, yeah. Well, let's, we've got something else up here. What, yeah, we have here? some of these slides are related to the pandemic. So um, we had finally done enough renovations uh, that we were, at, at the beginning of 2020, I was going to go full time for the organization. I've been part time. We were like, okay, you know, this is going to be the year. The call kind well, of emerges. about March the yeah. 7th. <laughs> right. And then COVID hit in March uh, and things got really rough for a while. But uh, we, in not too long of a time, we really, we really realized that the, we'd gotten lucky with the space because those rolling garage doors you can see in the photo, mm -hmm. we have those on almost all the buildings. They roll right up and create an incredible amount of airflow. 
Um, so we were able to still do dance classes. We were able to, uh, we had a number of artists come in and do photo and video shoots at mm -hmm. the space because the, the studios they were used to were shut down. Um, so this is an example of one of those. Um, uh, that's another construction photo. But if we keep going, I think we, we might have some photos of um, some of the projects that emerged. Solstice did, um, you can't see, but they had a green screen on the facing wall. And so they did a remote Solstice at the workshop and then a number of classes uh -huh, during great. the summer of 2021. Um, and then as, uh, and we can keep going here a little bit, as conditions started to ease a little bit, we had, yeah, this was an art show uh, by local artist DJ Javier. Um, where folks realized when the conditions eased a little bit more, when people were allowed to do things but were still kind of nervous about it, the call was a place where, like, I can put on a show and people might actually feel comfortable coming out because mm -hmm. there's so much airflow here. So this is another uh, pop-up uh, workshop that we did indoors and outdoors uh, that Vinay Rivera has organized for a number of years. Um, and this, this is the Youth Makers Market, um, another, another pop-up show. Um, this is a, a really good example of the CAW, uh, one of the, functions of the cause as an incubator for new projects where you can come in and sort of start affordable and kind of gradually grow. And how, how did um, they start? So they, uh, they had heard about us. They reached out to us. They had an idea. Um, during the pandemic, uh, uh, some parents had noticed that their kids with their free time were making a lot of art and crafts and candles and honey. Um, and they seen pop-up markets elsewhere and thought, you know, what if we could do something right. for our kids? They're making all this stuff. It's a nice um, safe space. Absolutely. And so they were looking for a space to do it and reached out to us. Um, and so we sort of sponsored it the first couple of times, gave them the discounted rate, and then they were growing so fast, we kind of gave them the full nonprofit rate after the first couple of times. Um, and then they eventually, they were so successful that they needed a space, I think it's every month or maybe every week now that wow. they do it. Um, and so they found a space um, over that the, uh, the city, maybe through the Office of Arts and Culture, was able to give them um, at the store Placida Plaza. Um, and they, they do it over and over again now. It's a, a really well, wonderful cool. ongoing program. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So what are we looking at here? This is Ready to Hang. Um, this is a, a, a new program. Um, we've been going with this for three years now. Um, emerged from one of our board members talking about, you know, he's sort of, lamenting, you know, that, oh, that, you know, it used to be in Santa Barbara, it seemed like the big local artists, you know, they just kind of find a warehouse and they just sort of put on a show and 500 people would show up. And, you know, um, not two weeks ago, somebody was sitting in your chair seeing that exact same mm, thing. Mm. That's what Santa Barbara used you're right, to be like. Right, yeah. right. And he was talking about that. And he's like, oh, that sort of thing just doesn't happen anymore. And one of our other board members just sort of said, like, well, you think we could do something about yeah. that? You know, maybe we could do something like that here. And from that idea emerged of Ready to Hang, which is a, a come one, come all art show. Anybody can participate. There is no criteria except the fact that it's 12 by 12 exactly, okay. and no more than five inches off the wall. Okay. Um, we don't curate it otherwise. Uh, we, don't, we don't reject anything within reason. Do they within have to reason. pay to be in the, the show? You pay a $10 entry fee, uh -huh. um, and that covers the cost of running the show when you get a free drink and snacks at the right. opening reception. Right. And so what we end up with a show that open, we just end up with a show that's just kind of everything. That's wild. You know, it's, it's landscapes, it's abstract, it's portraits, it's graffiti style art. the prices art, are set by each artist. Art. The, sorry? The prices are set by Prices each are set yeah. by each artist. Yeah. The artist gets 70%, we take 30%. Okay. Um, and uh, it's just, and we really emphasize heavily, there's an artist party the first night, which is kind of the whole point for us right. to do the thing. There's a public sale the next night. But we're really, we're kind of almost more excited about the artist party, getting all Meeting these artists other, together, yeah. sharing sort of, and you sort of see people kind of trade tips and like, oh, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. And how did you, for many, uh, for many artists, it's their very first art sale. Yeah. Um, but we also have artists participating in the show that are, you know, some of Santa Barbara's well, most well-known and established artists. And so they're rubbing shoulder with people who were, you know, never the, done a the show first before. Thing they ever did, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so it's it's a really exciting and project. And how often does that happen? It happens once a year, um, the weekend before Thanksgiving. So we just did just it. Had it, yeah. it was just three weekends ago, something okay. like that. So it'll be coming around the pike. If anybody wants to participate in it again, you can sign up for our mailing list. You can follow us on Instagram. We put out a call to entries, September ish, okay. something like that. A couple months before. Yeah, and there's an entry form online. And, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this, this sort of shows, so uh, people who were paying attention might have seen this same space uh, in earlier uh, photos. So this is now a really great small gallery space. Um, and again, people tell us, oh, there isn't really another space like this in town. So an artist can come in and they can book this space for a two-week two show or a one-month show. We'll handle the sales for them. The fee for the room is really cheap, and again, we get 30% of sales. 
Um, and the artist can you know, put whatever they want on the walls that they think will sell. So it, again, it's a, it's a wide variety of work. Um, and I think that's really exciting for visual artists because you know, we, don't, we don't provide all of the services and all of the sort of creation that a professional gallery would do right. for you. So that's, I mean, that's a really unique niche. But a professional gallery, you kind of have to come in, and if they like your work, great. And if they don't yeah, like it, they're then they're going to take more than thirty you know, percent. And they do take more than thirty percent, absolutely. Yeah. And so to have an artist be able to just kind of come in, and you know, they don't. Some artists sort of they'll kind of send me their work every now and then, sort of hoping, you know, maybe you know maybe they need to curate this, or you know, will they like it? Will they not right. like it? And to get a, I usually just respond of just like, no, 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 you could just do a show. Right. Here's the here's the rate. Yeah, I'll find a spot on the calendar. Um, and I think it. Was, People get, at least the people who are looking that sort of thing, go, oh, 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 I could, oh, great. <laughs> I'm an artist. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's, we got about just three yeah. minutes left, and I want to see how many more uh, uh, pictures we can get. We're through. almost there. This was a recent really exciting use. This was a surf film festival. I just kind of wanted to show some of the variety. Um, so this was outdoors. They rented a screen and did a, a, a surf film festival. They used all the rooms at the car. They had several bars and snacks and variety of things. Uh, really exciting event. Um, this was, uh, this. I think this is the last photo in the show. This was a really wonderful Dia de, de los Muertos event organized by the Las Maestras Center at UCSB. Um, and it really, that's what the space looks like now. Um, and so you can kind of see some of the new doors and the new lighting and the, uh, the, uh, the existence of the space as it is now. Um, and just a really special event. I mean, again, they, they kind of, they came in, they had their vision, we gave them the room, they did their thing. Um, and every use brings in what feels like a different audience mm -hmm. because all of these groups kind of have their own following. Um, what's really cool is occasionally uh, very different kinds of projects will share the space at the same time. So right before this event got started, Opera Santa Barbara was finishing up a rehearsal in the room <laughs> that you can see right over there. Um, so, you know, you kind of see this crossover. People kind of meet that they wouldn't have expected right, to meet right. and occasionally they're like, oh, we should do something together. Yeah. Um, and that's really what the space is all yeah. about. It's a lot like this TV show, actually. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. a lot like it. Um, we just have a minute and a half left. Um, what are one or two big projects that, that you see on the horizon that you'd like to tackle? We are really excited to finish the capital campaign okay. um, because it'll free up. Uh, one of the ideas of the space is that the, we, we keep the budget very lean, our, our operating expenses as lean as we possibly can, to be able to use the earned income of the space to create subsidy funds and okay. grant programs. And so we're really excited to have the capital campaign over so we can fully take our focus to that. So I'm really excited to see what comes of that. Ready to Hang, it feels like, is kind of just coming into its own. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about the next year of Ready to Hang. Pianos on State as well. Um, and I think, you know, over the last year and a half or so, it really felt like enough people had found out about the CAW that it's really, it's kind of a thing now. People know about it. Um, but there's still a lot of people who don't know about it, honestly. So and I'm just really excited to see what the community does with the space. Yeah. Your web address for people? sbcaw.org, S-B-C-A-W dot O-R-G. Okay. That is going to be a great way to end the show. Casey, okay. is, uh, we're lucky to have you as the director. Oh, Thank thanks. So it's, I, I feel very lucky to have this job. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Uh, thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah, appreciate it. The Creative Community is a co-production of TVSB in Santa Barbara and CAPS Media in Ventura. It's sponsored by a generous grant from the Diana and Simon Rath Foundation. I'm your host, David Starkey.